Ken Thompson Back in the late 60s, Ken Thompson wrote the original Unix operating system with an economy of code that feels impossible today. His work wasn't just, let's make an OS. It was, let's rewrite the rules of how machines share resources and run programs. Unix introduced the idea of small, simple tools that could be combined in infinite ways. It's the same spirit behind today's command line magic, cloud server setups, and even your phone's operating system. The kicker? Thompson also hid an almost poetic lesson in trust, a compiler backdoor that could could insert malicious code invisibly, showing that security isn't just about code, it's about who writes it. That quiet, clever mix of creation and caution is why his code still hums under the surface of almost every modern device. Dennis Ritchie Dennis Ritchie didn't just co-create Unix with Thompson, he also created C, the programming language that became the DNA of modern computing. If you've ever used an operating system, driven a car with an onboard computer, or played a game on a console, you've touched something that's touched C. It's direct, it's flexible, and it's close enough to the hardware to squeeze out every drop of performance. Think of it as the grammar and alphabet that most other languages borrow from. C is behind Python's interpreter, Java's runtime, and even parts of your browser. Browser. Ritchie's work didn't scream for attention. It quietly built the stage on which all modern software performs. Margaret Hamilton when NASA's Apollo 11 mission was minutes from touching the moon, the onboard computer started throwing program alarms. Margaret Hamilton's software design didn't panic. It did exactly what she'd coded, dump less important tasks, and focus only on what mattered for landing. That real-time error handling saved the mission. Her code wasn't flashy, but it had something more important, bulletproof reliability under pressure. She led the team that coined the term software engineering and treated code like hardware, planned, tested, and stress-proofed. Today, concepts like fail-safe modes, priority scheduling, and error recovery in aerospace and medical systems trace straight back to her work. Radia Perlman if the internet is a city, Radia Perlman is the one who designed the street grid. Her creation, the Spanning Tree Protocol, solved a massive problem in network design. How to send data through complex routes without it looping endlessly and clogging the system. It's the reason your email reaches the right inbox, your video call stays connected, and data doesn't get lost in a digital traffic jam. Back in the 80s, networks were fragile and stubborn. One misconfigured cable could bring everything down. Perlman's protocol gave them a kind of self-awareness, letting them detect trouble and reroute automatically. She never chased fame, but her work is baked into Ethernet, cloud data centers, and even your home Wi-Fi. Without her, the internet might still be a messy tangle instead of the smooth highway it is today. John Carmack in the early 90s, games were flat, pixelated worlds. Then came John Carmack, writing engine code for Wolfenstein 3D, Doom, and Quake that bent hardware to his will. PCs back then weren't designed for smooth, fast 3D rendering, but Carmack's algorithms, like binary space partitioning and clever texture mapping, squeezed every possible frame from limited processors. His work didn't just make games look better. It redefined how we think about rendering, engines, and real-time physics. The same principles power modern VR, from Oculus headsets to training simulations. Carmack's code wasn't just about fun, it set technical standards for an entire industry. Guido Van Rossum before Python, learning to code meant memorizing dense syntax and rigid formatting. Guido Van Rossum's Python flipped that on its head, letting you write instructions that almost read like everyday language. Schools loved it. Scientists embraced it. Startups built empires on it. Its batteries included philosophy, gave developers tools for everything from AI to web apps right out of the box. Python's rise in data science, automation, and machine learning is no accident. It's approachable, yet powerful. A rare mix in tech. Guido didn't try to make the fastest or the fanciest language. He made the friendliest one that still gets serious work done. Tim Sweeney before Fortnite became a global phenomenon, Tim Sweeney was already building something bigger. In the 90s, he wrote the first version of the Unreal Engine, mostly on his own. It wasn't just a tool for his own games. It became a foundation that other developers could build on. Unreal was flexible. It could power tiny indie projects, massive blockbuster titles, even real-time film production. It handled lighting, physics, AI, and rendering in ways that freed artists from raw code, letting them focus on creativity. And today, Unreal Engine goes far beyond games. It's used in architecture, in the automotive industry, and even to build virtual sets for shows like The Mandalorian. Grace Hopper 
In an era when programming meant writing in raw machine code, Grace Hopper asked a radical question. Why can't computers understand English-like commands? Her work led to the creation of COBOL, a language still running countless financial systems today. She also popularized the term debugging after literally pulling a moth out of a malfunctioning computer. Hopper believed technology should adapt to people, not the other way around, and she pushed relentlessly for that vision. The reason we can write high-level code instead of binary gibberish owes a huge debt to her insistence that computers Computing could be more human friendly. Linus Torvalds. In 1991, a Finnish student named Linus Torvalds posted a small operating system kernel online as a free experiment. It exploded into a global project that now powers everything from Android phones to the servers behind Google, Amazon, and SpaceX. Torvalds didn't build all of Linux himself, but he built the culture around it, open, collaborative, and merit-based. His creation proved that volunteer-driven open-source projects could rival and even surpass billion-dollar corporate software. The stability, security, and adaptability of Linux have made it the invisible backbone of modern computing. Barbara Liskoff she didn't just teach programming, she reshaped how we think about trust in code. Her Liskov substitution principle sounds abstract, but it's the reason one piece of code can safely replace another without breaking things. She also built CLU, a language that inspired Python, Java, and C Sharp. Thanks to her, today's apps can be big, complex, and still run smoothly. Reliability wasn't an afterthought, she made it part of the design. Done watching? If you like this video, hit subscribe for more cool stuff.